Hello, hello, hello. How are you? It's Robin John of Rosenhouse. I am so happy to be here with you as always. We are looking at b the business energy <laughs> for the week of February 7, 2022. Um, I'm really not excited about sharing this, but I will. <laughs> I just got done uh, doing the business energy report, um, the, the full version, right? The business this week version. If you want the full version with the antidotes, go to, go to my website, robinjrosenhouse.com and sign up for business this week. So, um, so I always give you what's the most important part of it, right? And, um, man, today, you know, I, <sighs> spirit has really, um, brought me to a point of where uh, the message for today is one that's that's very vulnerable for me, right? Um, but important, I believe, for you. So, so I'm going to go with it. <laughs> and I'm going to share. It's one thing to share with my my little list, right, of the, the people, you know, like who were signed up for business this week. It's another one to put it on a, a public video. But um, so here we go. So it's, it's don't undervalue the, or don't devalue the importance of prayer, okay, or the power of prayer. Um, so um, this, isn't, this isn't all woo-woo, this isn't all religious, this isn't all of that. This is, you know, in terms of prayer, you pray to who you want to, right? So um, I, uh, I call, I pray to a being that I call God which um, probably my definition of God is, is different than, than yours, right? And I believe that's the case for most of us. I believe we all have different definitions. Um, anyway, so I've been having a problem this week, right? Um, I'm sure you guys know already, but like for the past six months, I've been, I've been on this journey where... Um, I, I, it, it's just been so uncomfortable being in my body, right? Um, I, my weight had gone up a, a little, you know, again, I don't even want to say a little more, it had gone up again. And it had hit that stage where, you know, where all my life and all my 57 years, my weight has never affected any, you know, any part of me. And all of a sudden it started, like the aches and the pains and um, my A1C was never high but it was, it was creeping up. Um, my blood pressure is, they can, it's, it's considered the low side of high. Um, but that was since they changed the, um, what they considered high and low, right? You know, before it wasn't, it wouldn't have been considered high. So anyway, and, and, and again, the aches and the pains and just super uncomfortable being in my body. So, um, I'm just looking over at the, at the, the live stream is going to be all weird again. And that I have a hard time signing out. So let's set that, the, the intention that I don't anyway. Um, so this, this, this food journey that I'm on right now, it's, it's really, it's, it's treating my eating behavior as an addiction, which I fully believe that it is. Um, I have a very addictive personality. It's really easy for me to get addicted to stuff. Um, and, and food, whatever. I, I believe that, that I, I was, I'm addicted to food. And um, from, the, from the chemical standpoint, um, the addiction comes from sugar any, you know, and sugar is anything sweet. In terms of addiction, anything that is uh, sweet that is, that doesn't have fiber. So like fruit is sweet, but it has fiber, right? But when you talk about maple syrup, when you talk about, you know, monk fruit, when you talk about artificial sweeteners, when you talk about refined sugar, all of that, the chemical makeup of it, sits differently in your brain. 
So that's part of it. And then the other part of it is flour, any kind of flour, including almond flour, including coconut flour. Because again, what happens is in order to um, make something into flour, it gets ground up, you lose the fiber, and um, it hits your brain. The sugar and the flour hit your brain the same way like heroin hits your brain and cocaine hits your brain. And um, so you just, you get used to getting this particular kind of hit that goes, you know, to me it goes beyond a dopamine hit. So anyway, so that's, that's kind of the backstory. And since, you know, my life has been so much more, I don't know, it's been better since I've gotten rid of this stuff. It's a pain in the neck to not be able to eat a sandwich once in a while. There's, there's definite inconveniences. However, um, the way that my ability to think has changed, the way my mood has regulated, the way, um, you know, my body feels and all these different things, right, um, has changed substantially. So I haven't had cravings in quite some time. Valentine's Day next week um, will be six months since I've been doing this. And the first couple of weeks were tough, but it got really fairly easy. Annoying, but easy. This past week has been absolute hell. Absolute hell. I, I can't, don't remember ever um, experiencing cravings to the level that I was experiencing this week. Not even, you know, what, whatever. This has been a very long journey and I've gone off sugar before and I've gone off flour before and I've done all this before, right? Um, but it was tr it, it was like I was in tears for a good part of, of any day because I was fighting these cravings so, so much. And I was terrified because... When I got on the scale today, especially, like I was so close. Um, I'm actually, I, I have been like these past few weeks, I've been at the lowest weight that I've been with the exception of one short period of time um, since my mother died, which is, uh, which I forget all the time. It's like 13 years, 16 years, something like that. And, and so I've been terrified because I don't want to give it up. I don't want to give up having this level of comfort in my body. I want it to keep getting better. Um, I don't want to give up having um, clarity of mind. Um, I don't want to give up my face not breaking out all the time. You know, it still breaks out, but it's not like the craziness, right? Um, there's so much. I just didn't want to give it up. And I was terrified this week that I was going to fall off the wagon. You know, again, it's just like addiction. Absolutely terrified. And I was doing everything in my power to um, stay on the straight and narrow. And yesterday morning, and this is where it really gets vulnerable, um, I, I try to write every morning. Um, didn't get to it yet today, but I try to write every morning. I try to do morning pages every morning. You know, I, I do them every day. I try to get it done in the morning. And, you know, yesterday I was like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta ask for help. I don't know if I can do this on my own. And, and I've come too far and I've worked too hard and, and I've gained too much, right? Like some, like my marriage, my marriage is really, really good, right? Thank God, right? And David and I both work on it. Um, 
And a lot of people, when they lose weight, their marriages go the other way. You know, they start tanking. My marriage is actually improving. Because what happened, what's happening is because I'm feeling better in my body and I, I'm, I'm able to get more done in a day, which makes me feel better. And I'm not as self-conscious in front of David. Like even though, like David has never, ever, ever said anything. Like he, he knew what he was getting into. <laughs> Pretty obvious, right? But he's never, you know, it's never been a thing ever. And, um, but I, but I've been closing off, you know, I've been, I've been making myself smaller as my body was getting bigger. I was making me smaller. So now that my body is starting to get a little smaller, I'm starting to remember where I was making me smaller and I'm opening that up. So the more that I open that up, the more real I become, the more authentic I become, the more um, vulnerable I allow, I allow myself to be wherever, like with whoever, with whatever, if it's somebody safe. And... And I, I didn't want to lose it, you know, I was terrified. So yesterday in my journal, I said, okay, God, let's give this a try. Let me find it. And my handwriting is so bad. So, or because I was journaling, I wasn't expecting to read it again. Um, I need help healing this food addiction and I need help getting my weight and body down to what's right for me. It's almost six months and I'm losing steam and the novelty is, is wearing off. The food is boring and the Oreos are calling my name. Please help me. I need the strength to do what needs to be done. And I need to take this excess weight off much faster before I become too impatient. And then I took a breath and I said, of course it gets to be fast and easy. And it gets to be that way because it does. Thank you, love Robin. And that was how I ended yesterday's journaling. And I forgot about it. Completely forgot about it. And I went about my day. And at the end of the day, I was like, hmm. I didn't have any cravings today. That's odd, <laughs> you know? And I was like, huh. Because the other thing I was struggling with was um, all of a sudden I was fab famished. All, like, just famished famished all the time I couldn't figure out why and like and again at the end of the day I was like I wasn't famished like I got hungry at the right times and then I ate that's kind of weird and then I remembered you know I did that at like eight in the morning and then I remembered I had gotten busy afterwards and I had to remind myself to go eat breakfast. And I didn't eat breakfast until about noon. And it was just the way it went, like for the rest of the day. It's like, oh, I gotta get my next meal in. Which is kind of the way it was at the beginning. And then I woke up this morning and I'm like, I've been looking to break through a number. And I woke up this morning and I'm like, I got on the scale because my weight, you know, I go up and down two pounds, whatever, all week long. I wait for a few days in a row of being at a, you know, at a certain number before recording it because then I know it's stuck. And so today I got a first glimpse at the new number. I got a first glimpse at 
hitting 40 pounds. And I also was in that space again where I wasn't like starving. Like I woke up, I thought I was hungry, but I, I said, let me go, you know, take a drink and blah, blah, blah. And just, you know, start getting my supplements in. Next thing I knew, I forgot that I was hungry. Like I wasn't hungry anymore. And, you know, and that I didn't get hungry until later. But I, in the meantime, I cleaned the kitchen. I cleaned bathrooms. I, you know, got a little laundry and I like, I did all this stuff. And it wasn't like... You know, sometime during today that I remembered, I put that prayer out yesterday. It was, it was a heartfelt help me. And no expectations of getting the help. No expectation of it working. And yet it did. Because the desire was so strong that it overshadowed everything else. And that's why I'm talking to you <clears throat> about the power of prayer. If you pray and things aren't working, they're still not working. You need to look at what you're praying about because when you're praying about somebody else, having them change a behavior or something to that effect, you can, you can def, it will definitely have some, you know, influence in helping to create a supportive energy for that to happen. But that person that you're praying for has to want it to. They have to want it, like really desire it. Where that desire is stronger than the doubt. When your desire is stronger than the doubt, especially if you have to take the actions and the habits, that bring you closer to your desire, man, you create miracles. You create miracles. So I know this wasn't very businessy, and then again it is. Because you're an entrepreneur, and how you feel, and how you go about your day, and what you think, especially how you feel, um, affects your business. So don't devalue the power of prayer. And don't get a hung up on who you're praying to. It's funny. Um, I'm, I can't think. I think it's called Seeking Wisdom. Julia Cameron, the person who wrote um, the, the Artist's Way, has a new book. And it's called Seeking Wisdom. And in it, she talks about her journey with prayer. And how she went through, you know, the 12 step program. And, um, and, you know, she was reestablishing a relationship with God and um, redefining who God and what God was for her and to her. And, you know, there were people in the program, she talks about like one of the people in the program would pray. Right, you know, God grant me the serenity, right? Because it was all Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, she would pray to sunspots. <laughs> Somebody else would pray to trees. Somebody else prayed to Nick Jagger. <laughs> Nick Jagger. <laughs> you know, you, you pray to, uh, to who you have that relationship with, right? And you, and you get to create it. You get to create your vision, your version of God. I, I uh, one of the exercises that I found very powerful in that book is um, write down the um, the traits of the God that you grew up with, the God that you that you know you were taught to know, 
and then write down the traits of the the god that um, you you wish he was instead he she it right and then make the decision that that's who you're praying to and uh, and I was like you know what that's pretty damn powerful you know it, that's pretty damn powerful and um, that's changed a lot too for me just redefining but in writing like I've been redefining my vision of him um, and I still I, I stick with him I know it's not politically correct um, it's I'm 57 some things I'm it's not worth fighting um, <laughs> And it um, seems to make a difference. So that is that. Um, thanks for listening. And I hope this helps somebody. And what I will say to you is if there is something that you are having a challenge with and you just can't see that way through, um, I'm happy to do a one-on-one -on -one coaching session. Um, we sit down and we can just look at that one particular issue. We can look at maybe where there's a different perspective. We can look at where you could possibly be blocking yourself inadvertently, right? And we're not even talking about real self-sabotage. There just might be a habit that you have that um, you'd be better off without. That, and you don't even know it because it just seems inconsequential. We had that um, recently with, with a client. There was a, a habit that just seemed inconsequential. And from that energetic perspective, you know, because I see the energy, it was like big wah, 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 you know. <laughs> and so once she had it in her awareness and she made the change, it was like, like shit started happening. So... Um, I'd love to be able to do that for more people. I mean, that's, you know, that's why I do this. Just to, I don't know. I, I, I like to see people be successful. So whether it's, you know, emotionally, whether it's spiritually, whether it's materially, you know, um, personal life, professional life, whatever it is. So um, if you're interested in that one-on-one -on -one coaching session, DM me. Let's talk about it. You know, we'll talk price. We'll talk about what you get. We'll see how we can make it work for you. If your desire is stronger than your doubt, I would love to help you. So, and if you're not sure, let's talk about it because maybe I can get you there. So, that's what I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for, for watching and for listening. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Remember, when you align your energy, you accelerate your results. It's Robin John of Rosenhouse, and now I have to figure out how to get the Facebook Live to end because this thing has been very, very weird. So it might take a minute. <laughs>